Happy July. Happy Stranger Things Week. Woohoo! We are only two weeks, two weeks, I say, away from San Diego Comic Con, the Good biggest Lord. pop culture festival on the West Coast. And this week's show, we are previewing some of the most exciting exclusives for 2019, including Hasbro, Funko, Toho, Godzilla, and more. We also have a conversation with Tony Kim from Hero Within Clothing, plus the latest news. Stay tuned. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now. Here's Popcorn Talks, the Con Guy Comic Con Prep Show. Welcome to the Con Guy Comic Con Prep Show. I love that music we yeah. have going around right there. Feels yeah. groovy, it's feels cool. cool. Welcome to summer. We are into the long feels, days of it feels summer. Public domain. Yes. Very yeah. public domain. Yeah. I love it. This is the Con Guy Comic Con Prep Show coming at you from After Buzz and Popcorn Talk Studios. Make sure you like us. That was kind of cool too. I kind of right. like that. Yeah, I think that was somebody's. I think that's, that's that is that call. is actually our guest right now. Oh, all right, oh, he's here already. We've got a special okay. guest, everyone. We have a special guest, but let me introduce you guys real quick to our special guest. This week we are t talking all about Comic Con exclusives, mm -hmm. and for half the people that go down to Comic Con, the exclusives is exactly what they are going for. They line up for days to get those things. So this week we're going to try our best to talk about Comic Con exclusives, and for the very our very first guest of the night is Tony Kim. Tony Kim is uh, the founder and owner of Hero Within Clothing. It's a really cool geek and nerd. I am actually wearing. Oh, you are one of Tony's shirts right now. I got this from uh, Hero Within. Dude, you just outed nice. Tony as Superman. Come wow. on, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, without further ado, um, by the way, let us introduce ourselves first. My name is Jim. I am the managing editor here at the Con Guy Comic Con Prep Show. I'm Derek. I'm a contributor to theconguy.com and, of course, a co-host of the, comic, the Con Guy Comic Con Prep Show. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Mm, it is. Uh, I'm Katie. I am aka the Con Girl and also the resident cosplayer. And you can find me on, like, always t uh, on social media. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's wow. what those things are called. Okay, I'm sorry. Tony is waiting. <laughs> yeah. I'm Ben Cleaver, actor, comedian, contributor to theconguy.com and avid geek. Yes, and in the booth we have Ryan who takes care of us every week. Hello, Thank Ryan. You, Ryan. Hey guys, how we doing? Really excited for the show tonight. All right, Ryan, do we have Tony on the line yet? We do have Tony on the okay. line. All right, so Tony, hello, hello. You're on the Con Guys hello. Comic Con Prep Show. How hey, are you doing, Tony? Are you what there? Up, what up, nerd? Hey, hey Tony. Tony. So good for you to. I mean, we're so happy for you to be on with us tonight. Tony is coming to us from I think down in the dark reaches of Orange County. Is that right, Tony? <laughs> That's right. No, I, I, I make fun because Orange County is one of the most fun, brightly lit places in all of California. Bright, <laughs> very brightly lit. A lot of electric bills down there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so Tony, you keeping busy these days? Oh man, you know how it is. You, when we're uh, we we cross that July first marker, and man, it just gets insane. Oh, and yeah. so it's <laughs> it's day and night, weekends. I, I tell everybody that at this time of year, it's. Uh, Eight days a week, 25 hours a day. <laughs> and I think... To get ready. And, and for those of you who are watching on YouTube, we have a picture of Tony up there. That is Mr. Tony Kim. He is also the founder of Crazy for Comic Con, a cool website that um, tells about all the, the con culture and everything. And Carrie, who used to be one of our co-hosts here, she writes regularly for Tony. She has some cool articles on there right now about Anna, Anna, Anaheim. Anime. Anime, anime Expo. Uh, anime Expo. Anime Expo, <laughs> AX. Getting ahead and of that's myself. going on this weekend. That's going on yes. this weekend. But for right now, we are here because Tony has done something really cool, and I don't know how it happened, but Tony, can you tell us a little bit about this very cool 50th anniversary um, hoodie that Hero Within has? Well, at first, first, tell us about Hero Within. Where did that come from? Yeah, you know... Uh, it uh, was birthed out of cons, and so you know Comic Con and um, the whole journey, my own personal journey, is all intertwined together. And just like you guys, I mean, I was going to a lot of conventions, and uh, like you mentioned, Crazy for Comic Con was giving me opportunity to be a part of uh, the industry through panels and through uh, different events. And after a while, I just realized after going to those events that there really wasn't anything for nerds and geeks to wear that was beyond just your typical sort of t-shirt or pullover. Yeah. And um, so after doing a lot of uh, research, I felt like that maybe I could uh, create something that was subtle and sophisticated, uh, but still very fan focused. And so we launched 
just a few years ago, 2016, and uh, we're at our we're turning back for our third Comic Con. So it's kind of crazy. It's been a crazy roller coaster ride, but it's really flown by. That's very cool. And Tony, I don't know if you heard, I am actually wearing one of your shirts tonight. My, this, I got this cool uh, Superman shirt. I was almost saying Batman, but <laughs> I got this cool Superman shirt at Hero With. Then I think a year and a half to two years ago, and that was when you exclusively had the DC license, but now you also, you have yeah. the Marvel license as well, right? That's right, yeah. We launched with uh, Marvel last year, and, um, you know, we love uh, DC, we love Marvel, we love love it all, so it's been awesome to be able to, to support, support both sides. Yeah, but one of the most exciting things, and this is, I was kind of jumping the gun at the beginning of the interview there, is can you tell us a little bit, and we do have a, a picture, it's the, our next photo that you sent us. Can you tell us a little bit about the hoodies that we're looking at right now? Those look awesome. Yeah, you know, it was really cool because um, in, in working, collaborating with the Comic-Con International team, um, you know, they are, they are, of course, like organizing the world's biggest pop culture events. Um, but, you know, at, at, at the heart of it, they're all fans. You know, they really want to provide um, the ultimate experience for fans, uh, whether it's not just through comics, but through all media, TV, film, and whatever. And uh, it was really great to be able to work with uh, the Comic-Con team because they were really interested. Because it's the 50th anniversary, they really wanted to provide some unique um, apparel to sort of uh, commemorate this year. And so we were able to work together um, to design a piece that is not just um, comfortable and um, sort of utilitarian, but also stylish and something that really brings sort of a, uh, 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 brings honor to sort of the 50 year legacy of Comic-Con. So, so yeah, it was a really, it was, a, it was an enormous, um, you know, privilege to be able to work with the team on, on putting this together. That is cool. You've got another uh, new item coming out too, right? Yeah, we actually uh, we have a few. We've been over the past couple of days. We've been announcing our exclusives, and yeah. we uh, like this is besides this being the 50th anniversary. It's also Batman's 80th anniversary. And yes, so that's what I want to hear we, about. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're so we're coming out with a um, 80th anniversary Batman T-shirt, and I think um, we have that uh, shirt as well. Yep, right here. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, cool. cool. Yeah, that shirt yeah. looks so great. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a tone on tone, uh, mm -hmm. taking the it's very simple, just the, the, taking their. Yeah. Oh nope! Looks oh, like we got a little uh, interference here. Oh, are you there? You there, Tony? Yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. There okay. we go. <laughs> okay, we're, we're looking at the yeah, Batman sorry. shirt right now. We're sorry, we lost you for a second. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So um, you know, we wanted to. To celebrate, of course, uh, 80 years of Batman, and so uh, this is a very sort of subtle tone-on-tone -tone design, and uh, yeah, we're really excited about about this one. And then we're also um, we just released today a it's not only Batman's 80th anniversary, but it's Marvel's 80th anniversary yeah. as oh, well. Right. Yeah. So um, we are we released today images of our um, Spider-Man inspired hoodie, and um, so you know it's just like it's crazy just how many different significant celebrations there are this year. I know. And we're excited to be able to commemorate it through these pieces. Can I ask you a question though? Like, are, is the hoodie completely sold out? That's like, I've heard it completely sold out. Well, so Comic-Con does a, does their pre-order. Uh, they did sell out of their pre-order and then uh, they will have, um, the, they will have, some merchandise available on site for them, but then we are also selling the, the Comic Con hoodie at our booth because we didn't do any pre orders. Which booth is so, that? So, um, uh, booth 2047. 2047, great. And yeah, so if you want to, you know, for, for fans, if they want to come by and get one, you know, they have to, it's, we're getting a lot of demand for it. So mm -hmm. it's going to be, um, Imagine if you combine uh, the Battle of Winterfell and the Battle of Helm's Deep <laughs> together. <laughs> That's basically what it's going to be like. Wow. So we're, we're, 
So we're telling fans to come early in the morning, first thing. And then I think we're going to also do a second distribution in the day, like around 2 o'clock, just to sort of spread out the, the crowds. But, mm-hmm. but, yeah, we're getting a lot of uh, – because it's sold out so quickly on the website, mm-hmm. on the Comic-Con website, uh, we're getting a lot of demand for it. That's great. Can you pre-order yes. – did you say you can pre-order, pre-order it to pick up at the booth? Well, no, not for us. No okay. pre-orders at the booth. So the only pre-order that occurred was at, um, okay. at Comic-Con. So for you, you guys, know, it's uh, like the, the fight. Basic, <laughs> the, the, the basically, in the design of the, the hoodie, I wanted to create something that was like a, a deconstruction of the Comic-Con logo. And it's really utilitarian. It's got a, a, you know, a, a, a quick zipper pocket on the sleeve for to grab your tickets or your you know anything like that cash whatever and then it's got a sharpie pockets on the other sleeves if you need autographs it's got interior pockets as well and uh, so you know, really want to make it functional for uh the comic-con experience nice now tony this is ben cleaver hi how you doing bud hey man good to see you <laughs> good to, good to well see here <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, in the studio, uh, projected up on the screen, we don't have a picture of the Spider-Man hoodie, but I just looked at it on the computer, and this thing is sexy as hell. Yeah. Yeah. It's... (laughs) This Spider-Man hoodie is dope. And can you imagine somebody walking around wearing the Batman t-shirt under the Spider-Man hoodie? (laughs) That that would mess with my head there. Um, That's one thing I really like about Hero Within, is the designs are not just... Like uh, like you said earlier, Tony, it's it's not just like a t-shirt that just has... Um, I don't know, some kitschy picture and stuff, which I wear those too. But there is, like, some actually really nice clothes. Yes. Like, my wife yeah. bought me the uh, the Superman blazer for my birthday. Yeah. Um, she and a number of friends bought it for me together. And it's, like, it's it's a great jacket. It just looks classy yeah. in addition. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, it's bright colors, but you could still wear it to, I can wear like, it to a nice work. event. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I- I'll, I'm just going to brag on you a little, Tony. We... Uh, it, because it was something, I think it was a limited edition, my size wasn't available because I do have to wear a small. And so she got a medium at first. And we went and tried to get it altered. We couldn't do that. And um, you got, like, Hero Within was really great because um, she was communicating with you guys. And they were making arrangements to return it because, unfortunately, my size just wasn't available anymore. And because of the way this it was designed, you couldn't actually get it altered yeah. and taken in in some places. Um, but He's then, still growing. Yeah, but then uh, the <laughs> person we were talking to uh, emailed her back and said, "Hey, we came up, we came across a small. Would you like to just exchange it?" And they just like, I guess, just found one and took care of us. It was really great. Um, everybody oh, was super good. helpful. That's so good. we had a great experience all around. I just want you to know that. Yeah, my friend Greg oh. got one, and I, I love the jacket. Yeah, my friend Greg got a. I think it was the Superman. Is it Superman or ba- a Batman overcoat last year? I do you remember the one that Greg got. Yeah. Like, <sighs> I, I mean, everybody loves your stuff, Tony. Yeah. 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 Well, and also, well, I remember... You. That's, so, that's so kind. Oh, yeah. I, I remember when you were here, I think you were wearing that uh, Wonder Woman denim jacket when you came to visit us a yeah. while back. Um, yeah. Which is cool yeah. that there's, like, Wonder Woman stuff for men to wear. Because yes. men can be mm-hmm. fans of Wonder Woman, too. Yes. <laughs> you know? Most of us are. Yeah. <laughs> and, Tony, my wife, Brianna, is so happy that you came out with the women's cut of the Wonder Woman denim mm. jacket as well. Because <laughs> she yeah. loves that thing. Yeah. Uh, I also want well, to mention... Of, speaking, of, uh, speaking of ladies, uh, we, we also have... We haven't released it yet, but uh, another exclusive coming out is... Um, we, we've had the, uh, Captain America Endgame, um, oh. sorry, Captain America Infinity War sweater that we've had in stock for the uh, past, um, this past year, but wow. at Comic-Con we're releasing the Captain America Endgame sweater oh, nice. So, uh, nice. for, for ladies. And so that's going to come out. We'll probably post that the next day or two. Awesome. Um, but we're really excited about that. And where can people find these, these items that you're posting? Uh, we're first releasing them on Twitter and Instagram, mm-hmm. so it's Hero Within Inc. Inc. Mm-hmm. Um, on Instagram and, t- and Twitter and, and our Facebook page, and then they post on our on our blog, which is HeroWithinStore.com. dot mm-hmm. right. com. And then a really cool thing is that so we have those, that's four exclusives, but yeah. we have a fifth one. Yeah. We have a fifth exclusive that is I, I can't share it just yet. <laughs> but it's, um, <laughs> it's in relation. It's in relation to a new license that we are Ooh, announcing awesome. next, really? the next uh, this next week. So, and it will be at Comic Con. It will be at Comic Con. This this piece will be at Comic Con, but it'll kind of kick off our uh, a new relationship that we have. Awesome. Cool. That's awesome. That's and when will you release yeah. information about this item? Uh, still work out the details, but 
I mean, I'm, I'm hoping sooner or later, but it's uh, at the very latest, it'll be the week of Comic Con. Okay. It'll okay. be maybe, hopefully, within the next 10 days or so. Cool. Katie, have you been down to the Hero Within booth? I've walked past it. I haven't been able to like you should, uh, spend. You, I, I want yeah. to this time for sure. Yeah. Well, and um, I, I walked by at WonderCon, but it was too crowded for me to yeah. get very close. <laughs> well, my last my last Comic Con exclusive hoodie is like dead, so I need a new hoodie. So I'll probably definitely stop by there. Well, well yeah. Tony, speaking of that, can you tell us how much these hoodies will go for? Yeah, both the hoodies are for ninety nine dollars. Oh, nice. 99 bucks. Yep. Cool. Quality garment, yeah. too. And I'm looking at the Spider Man yeah. hoodie, too. That looks The details amazing. are, but like, so amazing. There, it's, there's a lot of detail and thought into it, and I really like that. That Spider Man hoodie has Spider-Man a pocket white. in the sleeve there. Yeah, in the he did, yeah he, I love he talked that. about that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Tony. For your, for your so, but now I'm seeing it. Yeah. Tony, is your background in designing? I mean, this is a very cool aesthetic you have for this the, your clothes here. It is. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to school for. For design and uh, mostly worked in marketing, design, graphic design, communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I then branched a little bit into interior design. So I did that for a little bit, um, and then ended up in fashion. So just yeah. you know, it's all sort of you know, it's, it's all adjacent and related to each other, and um, it's been a it's been awesome. And um, I've been you know, most of all, I'm so touched by what everyone's saying because I think ultimately. What I'm so grateful for is at Comic Con, you know, to be able to get direct feedback about what customers like or what they don't like so much, and what they appreciate and what they how how clothing has uh, maybe um, inspired them or how you know how it affects them. Um, that kind of stuff is like invaluable. You know, that's what I love about Comic Cons is that you get the chance to hear all that firsthand. And every piece of feedback that anyone ever tells us, we take it to heart, you know, and it's mm -hmm. really important to us. And um, so if things don't work or if they're, if they're, you know, if they, what they love or don't love, whatever, all that sort of stuff that we, that we get, um, we take it and directly apply it to our future, future uh, products. And so, so yeah, so thank you guys for just yeah. being so kind and um, I, we appreciate that. Well, Tony, as we wrap up here, I have two things that I want to say, and that is, I want to announce to everybody that in two weeks we are going to have a special show all about the offsites and parties of Comic Con. Yes. And Tony, I am very sad that RIP <laughs> that Game of Bloggers is no more. That is a very sad development. So yeah, uh, it was yeah, it was a bummer to to make the announcement that we would um, that we were you know ending it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was one of those things that you know we did a four year run with it, and mm -hmm. it was a number bird. You know, Jim and you, you and your team. I, I, I love the it. First it was time a at, at great those, party. Yeah, at those at, at those events, and um, but you know, we felt like this is the right time for mm -hmm. it. Four years is a good run for an offsite. You know, like yep. there's not a lot of offsites that last longer than four years, and <laughs> um, we, you know, we we felt like with the because the Game of Thrones, which was kind of inspired by right. because that had concluded, like it was time for us to rebrand it anyway, and. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just personally, um, I, you know, I did want to take a year to be more available and spend more time with my friends and family that's going to be at the show as well. Mm -hmm. So it just all sort of felt like it was the right time to sort of, um, I, I wouldn't say put it into it because I think it's going to, it'll come back in a different, you know, a different form. It's just going to, we'll mm -hmm. take a break this year and then it'll, it'll return in a different, um, yeah, in a different way. So, yeah, it was a, the, the thing I loved so much about it though, Tony, is like, when we first started this blog, we went there to, I mean, when we first started this website, we went there to Game of Bloggers, and it was one of the best ways to network and meet everybody, and you were so gracious, and you introduced us to everybody, and that was fantastic. Number two, yeah, yeah. number two, in one week from tonight, we are having our, our annual show about the panels of Comic-Con. So, Tony, yep. do you have any panels that you want to announce that you will be a part of? I do. Uh, a couple of big ones. Um, the first one is our um, Building a Geek Brand panel, which is this is its fourth year. Always it's a good panel. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, based the, the whole division behind that is, is because we live in an age where there's never easier than before to create content. Um, it's, it's, but at the same time, it's also tough to be able to kind of get to the next level when it comes to creating content. So, for all the people who are writing blogs or writing a book, illustrating, um, producing, screenwriting, um, any of your cosplayers, um, this panel is for you. It's, it's, 
basically to help provide some tips and tricks and maybe some things to avoid to maybe help take your passion and fandom and help evolve it into a career. So on the panel is going to be a bunch of different content creators, writers, authors, artists, um, merchandisers like myself, and, and just to help provide some, um, you know, some direction for aspiring creators. And then the, um, the other two are uh, um, different sort of panels. Um, I'm going to be on the, um, the DC Comics stage. You know, DC and Warner Brothers is, they, you know, they formed a new mega booth. Right. And, uh, and so I'll be doing uh, two different panels there, one on Friday, uh, one on Saturday. They're about 40-minute panels. And they're basically like um, uh, they, they've given us the stage to basically do whatever we want. So nice. we'll be cool. talking about a lot of different things uh, besides the clothing line, but we'll also be doing some fun things with some giveaways. Uh, I'll be sharing my story. And, and ultimately, the point of it is to really share – the value that Here Within it has about heroism, you know, the, the importance of it, how um, uh, the need to really celebrate heroes and um, how we can have, we all have a hero in within all of us. So um, there'll be a lot of fun aspects to it, but we really want to just pound that message out that, um, you know, there, we've never lived in a time where heroes are more important and we all have a chance to be heroes to each other. So, so yeah, so that's going to be Friday and Saturday, my panels on Friday and then, my, both my sessions at DC is going to be on Friday and Saturday. Fantastic, cool. Tony. Cool. Thank you so much for yeah. um, calling into the show tonight. We know you are one busy man. Like when it comes time, these two weeks right here, I know that you are kind of running around like a chicken with your head cut off. So it's so we're so happy to have <laughs> you on the show with us tonight. One could say that Tony yeah. is crazy for Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. great. All right, Tony, if you could well, remind us real quick before you go, where can people find you online and where can they find your stuff? Yeah, definitely uh, here within Inc. INC on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and then you could find us find the website at herewithinstore.com, and then me personally at Crazy the Number Four Comic Con, mm -hmm. and I'll be you know tweeting uh, all these days leading up to the show as well as at the show about all the latest and greatest, the new best and weird at Comic Con. Nice. So, and your, yeah, what's your booth number one more time? Uh, booth twenty forty seven. Twenty forty seven. Kind of right in the Right in the middle of the floor, right above uh, Sideshow Collectibles. Okay, okay great. cool. Tony, thank you so much. Thank you again for coming on the show tonight. We will talk to you, yep. and we'll see you down there in two weeks, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you guys are awesome. Keep up the good work, and uh, we'll see you down there. All Thanks, right. Tony. Well, thank you, you. Tony. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wow. That's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Almost yeah. all of us here have like been to his booth, gotten something from his booth. Yeah. I, remember oh, yeah. when, I remember when Laura was secretly planning to get your jacket for your birthday. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah. and I remember her, like, she had been talking about it for a while, like wanting to get it, and then, yeah, opening that up on my birthday was really fun. <laughs> so just, what we're going to do now, let me just tell everybody what we're going to do real quick. We are going to go through the bulletin board first, yeah. and then we're going to cut back to Ben. Ben's got a, what? He's got a special section for us tonight. Katie's going to walk us through a little bit of the Comic-Con news, and then we are diving straight into the exclusives. Nice. All right, Derek. So let's look at the bulletin board. This week, July 4th through 7th, um, while you're celebrating America's independence, you could also, if you're in downtown L.A., check out the Anime Expo. Nice. Um, that's at the L.A. Convention Center. And then next week, July 12th through 14th, the Fanboy Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee. And then July 17th through 21st, of course, that's including preview night, is San Diego Comic Con. And that is two weeks away. That's crazy. <sighs> And then August 2nd through 4th is Tampa Bay Comic Con at the Tampa Convention Center. Some of the guests include Michael Rooker, Ron Perlman, Bonnie Wright, who played Ginny Weasley in the Harry Potter series, and Adam Baldwin, who, of course, well, he's in Firefly, he was in Chuck, he's been in all... Last just about, ship, a lot of stuff, yeah. He's in so many things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then October 11th through 13th is LA Comic Con. The early bird tickets are on sale now, and one thing they've announced is the office reunion... Um, and it keeps growing. You yeah, and I keep getting emails about all this stuff that's coming in. I'm, I'm excited about LA Comic Con. <laughs> I like that it's close. I like that the main stage is in the exhibit hall. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, studio audience. <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page. Um, some other events coming up. July 11th is the InfoList Pre-Comic Con Bash. It's at a brand new location, the Wisdom Dome Park, downtown Los Angeles, 360 
360 immersive experience, a celebration of all things comic book, sci-fi, fantasy, and cosplay. Celebrities, Power Rangers, screenwriters, FX companies, artists, the publishers of Fangoria, um, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of cosplay. This is really cool. These it's, are giant domes. It's, it's like a multi-acre, almost like a little amusement park. A big amusement park that's for cool. virtual reality. It's really cool. That's cool. Oh, I haven't wow. been there. I mean, we've been to this party before, <clears throat> but they've, yeah. they've switched I, venues. I, this new location sounds nice. pretty cool. And then um, another event that I, I just heard about today. If you're playing Harry Potter Wizards, Wizards Unite, they're having their first real-world event, Labor Day weekend, um, August 31st and September 1st in Indianapolis, which is basically a fan festival. And apparently Niantic has done this with, with uh, Pokemon yes. Go already a few times and maybe some of their other games. Um right. But this is the first one for Wizards Unite, yes. which is anybody else playing it? I know you are, Katie. Yeah, I am. Because yeah. we're friends. We, we, we both played together with, with on my we birthday. Have. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we 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 got into a fortress and we fought some acromantulas and some werewolves side by side. We did. Um, and we won. Gosh, that sounds fun. Yes, it is. It's it is a fun, fun game. I mean, if you if you like Harry Potter and you like that kind of AR. Um, mm -hmm kind of like geocaching type game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's great. You can also like make sp uh, make potions and use those potions later on when you're battling um, or dueling, I guess. And yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. My wife has gotten super into it. She's, she she's has. kind of obsessed. She's yeah. super into it. Too. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that she's way further ahead of me. Yeah. And it, yeah, she's, anyway. Yeah. But it's a good one. It's, <laughs> one thing I like about it is all the, Pokemon Go was gradually introducing more Correct. features, and this one, it feels like they've developed it a whole lot more and given you a whole lot all at once. Yes. So you're kind of learning stuff as you go. There's also a thing where you can, um, you have this option to download all assets when you're on Wi-Fi. I saw that, yeah. It does take up space on your phone to do that, but basically that means like the images and sounds are already on your phone. So when you encounter something new, it's not uh, streaming that over the network and using up your data oh. the same way. Oh, cool. Um, anyway. Yeah. All right, very cool. If you're cool. playing Wizards Unite, I recommend doing that. There yeah. you go. All right. If you're not playing Wizards Unite, I recommend playing Wizards Unite. All right, for the rest of the show, we Indeed. are talking about nothing else except for San Diego Comic Con. <sighs> this is all about San Diego Comic Con. We're all going down there. We're really excited except for Ben. I say nay. Okay. And he has something to talk to us about this. Yeah. Listen, folks, uh, I you know, I, I just went over it uh, a couple days ago. I I actually made a little a little thing to hang on the wall of all my Comic-Con and WonderCon Anaheim badges, and uh, it was really neat, but I realize I have gone to San Diego Comic-Con every year since 2012. Wow. Hmm. So I That was my gone, first year, too. There you go. But I haven't gone every year since then. I have. I have. Uh, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Wow. Uh, which is seven years in a row, and so this mm -hmm. will be the first year in the last eight that I will have not gone San Diego Comic Con tonight. Oh, thank you, thank you, studio audience. And I do admit I have a little bit of FOMO. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, uh, but you know, it's just a, it's such a big expense. Yeah, I was gonna say I've got FOMO for the money that you're saving. Exactly. Yes. Right. I Actually, I I didn't buy a badge this year. We're just gonna be in San Diego and yeah. kind of check out the off sites. Right. Right. It's yeah. Which uh, is one thing I'm actually gonna talk about here in a second. So oh, basically, I've compiled a list because. You know, many thousands of people are going to San Diego Comic Con, but there are many more thousands of people out there who weren't able to get a badge, or they weren't able to get off work, or they just lived too far away, or yeah. they couldn't get a hotel, or whatnot, that aren't going to San Diego Comic Con. And so in, tonight, as we're talking about our exclusives and what you can get when you go to San Diego Comic Con, I want to reach out to you, my fellow Americans, <laughs> who or or international Europeans. people yeah. Yeah. who, uh, people who are world. not going, people of the world who are not going to San Diego Comic-Con this year, I join you in that. And here are my recommendations for things you can do mm -hmm. when you are not going to San Diego <laughs> Comic-Con July 17th through 21st, First. yeah, 2019. If you live in the Los Angeles area, you can seek out a wretched hive. Scum and Villainy mm -hmm. Cantina on Hollywood Boulevard is hosting <laughs> SAVCC. That's right, Scum and Villainy Cantina Con. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, doors open at noon on Saturday, July 20th, and the festivities run until 2 a.m. Noon to 5 is a fan film festival featuring one of the fan films I know that's going to be playing is Constantine Last Rites, which features mm -hmm. a little cameo by yours truly. Nice. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> 6 to 8 p.m. is... Team Geek Trivia, and Ooh. 9 p.m. to close will be music by DJ Elliot and Ruben Irvin, and more activities are TBA. Also, if you live in the Los Angeles area, there are a few other uh, a few other activities that you could check out, uh, and uh, perhaps maybe your FOMO 
for uh, for San Diego Comic Con is so great. You don't even <laughs> want to see something pop culture or geek related. You just want to go do something else. So I have some activities for you. July 19th and 20th at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Sinespia will be showing Alfred Hitchcock's Rear yes, Window. Nice. And the cult comedy classic Dumb and Dumber, uh, respectively, on the 19th and 20th. Which, have you guys done the Sinespia screenings no. at so, the cemetery? Yeah, they're amazing. It is so much fun. Uh, and on Ju July 21st at the John Anson Ford Theater, they will be showing Star Wars Return of the Jedi oh, nice. after having shown A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back at the same location July 7th and 14. Very cool. Uh, Delicious Little Tokyo 2019 will be happening in Little, Little Tokyo. Tokyo? Okay. Uh, on the 19th and 20th, featuring giveaways, demonstrations, hands-on workshops, and tastings. Delicious, delicious tastings. Mm -hmm. The Barnsdale Art Park Foundation will be featuring wine tastings throughout the summer, including Friday, July 19th. Street Food Cinema Los Angeles will be doing a 15th anniversary showing of Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy at Veterans Memorial Park in Culver City on Saturday, July 20th. Eat, See, Here will be playing Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion at LA State Historic Park on July 20th. Hugh Jackman will be performing at the Hollywood yep. Bowl July 19th and 20th. What? Wow. Yep. Right? Yeah, and there's, uh, there's a lot happening around LA. Yes. There is a lot, During and the, okay. and uh, just a little bit down the road, the Taco and Tequila Music Festival is coming to downtown Ventura, California, on July 20th and 21st. Other really quick well, recommendations. That's a, I would have definitely liked to go to that. Right. So. Other quick recommendations, not necessarily exclusive to Los Angeles. Visit your local comic book shop. Yes. Yeah. Give some much needed social interaction to the poor sap who the rest of the employees left behind to hold down the shop while they all went to Comic-Con. Uh, be true to yourself and what you claim to be. If you love comic book convention San Diego so much, then you should take no issue in patronizing your local comic book shop and reading the comics that you so claim to love. Hey. Comics are great. I highly recommend them. Um, along with that, if you're in the L.A. area, go to a, you can also go to a game store like Geeky Tees and Games in Burbank, which I'm always plugging here because I love that. And if you still want to like convene with people of like mind and enjoy something nerdy, get together for games at a shop like that. Support local business. There you go. A couple years ago, uh, or a few years ago, the year before I met my wife, she threw an I'm not going to San Diego Comic-Con party. Mm -hmm. And I suggest the same thing to you. Invite all your friends, play games, decorate your house, go to your local bookstore, buy a bunch of cheap Funko Pop vinyls, and then yes. make all your friends stand in line for three and a half hours and charge them an exorbitant amount of money <laughs> for them. Ooh. And uh, last but not least, as Derek uh, uh, had mentioned briefly, uh, my last suggestion, you could ghost the con. Now, ghosting, for those of you who don't know, can, in some cases, be considered... It's where you stop answering the con's text messages exactly. and ignore them, right? Exactly. Yeah. Now, it can be considered a controversial practice hmm. depending on your methods. Uh. So if you don't have a badge, but you're having SDCC FOMO, you can Sounds always... Sounds like a disease. Right? <laughs> You can always plane, train, or automobile your way down to San Diego without access to the con itself. Yeah. As we will be covering in the coming programs, there are... Two weeks! There you go. Two weeks. There are myriad opportunities to get your nerdy thrills outside of the convention center and events and activations that don't require a badge. At events and activations that don't require a badge. But if you do want to get into the badge-only activities or even the con itself, well, here's where the controversy kicks in. It's no secret that swapping out badges between individuals is a practice that has occurred for centuries. Naughty. Just like Han and Luke on the Death Star, your Stormtrooper armor could be a friend's badge that they generously let you use for a few hours while oh. they go off to wait in line for three and a half hours at the Spaghetti Factory in the Gaslamp District. However, I cannot, in good conscience, endorse or recommend any manner of attending Comic-Con outside of SDCC International's guidelines for obtaining entry. That's right. Even if you were to <laughs> succeed in attending badge-only events without a badge procured in your name, you're still in San Diego over Comic-Con weekend, and you're having to sell kidneys to be able to afford to sleep in somebody's closet for a few <laughs> hours. As for me... I'll be going to Disneyland because it will be dead. Oh. As it has been. It has it been, yes. I'm going on Saturday, so. <laughs> I might as well. Oh, okay, yeah. <coughs> Disneyland has been dead. Um, Galaxy's Edge has been wide open. All right, so we have a few things to go through. Hey, Katie, if you Correct. could, instead of all the news. Yes. The, for, because the red, everything's. Exclusives. Yeah, let's yes. stick to exclusives. So Correct. that first couple of items there, I think. Yeah, so uh, for everybody who is really wanting to know about how to get like Funko, Lego, Mattel, Hasbro, and then some the, of the signings. The biggies. Um, you do have to, ha it's a lottery system. And you know, we've talked about it before, but they 
changed it slightly this year. This year, you still enter the lottery, but you are given a certain amount of lottery tickets, as I'm calling them, to use per a day that you have a badge. So they give you a certain amount, and you can enter them as you wish. Uh, you can put them all in one single entry, or you can pull, put them throughout different um, slots. And then if they add more later, you can delete some from like another lottery or pull them. But my roommate found out if you originally submit for 10 slots for a Funko signing and then decide you want to take five of them away to put somewhere else, you cannot re-add those to that same slot later. Hmm. It's they're, it's done and done. done. You can't do it again. So um, that's going up until July 9th. It's like Twitter. <laughs> you can't change things on Twitter. <laughs> True. Mm. Uh, yeah, that goes till July 9th <laughs> at, I don't know if they said what time. But you have to noon. Till, till, you have till, till noon, noon to submit for that, and then they usually contact people. I don't know. I've never won one, but uh, <laughs> uh, they'll tell you before Comic Con or before it happens if you got it. And it's all a lottery system, so you know it could be you know a one in one million chance, or it could be one in eight million. You know, I have no idea how many um, people apply for. But it is nice because instead of just one ticket per a slot, you could essentially have twenty eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're also doing that for the WB um, and DC signings. Uh, when I say WB, I mean WB TV, because WB or DC movies will not have any presence at Comic Con. I believe Dude. is what they announced. So that's um, true. Yeah, and then they bring like seventeen I mean, shows. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and that's you do need that to get into the Funko booth. Um, there is a difference. There's the SDCC times uh, SDCC by Funko, which is the Comic Con Toucan. Funko there Pop. are two Funko booths. One's yes. the normal, crazy, impossible to get in Funko booth, and yes. the other one is the SDCC by Funko, and that's the Toucan Funko and uh, and Pez dispenser, right? And then the Batman with the Comic Con bag. Yeah, those are at the pardon me, um, Comic Con by uh, SDCC booth, and then there's the normal Funko booth, which has a whole bunch of Funkos that if if you go on their app, they tell you. If you go online to their uh, to Twitter, they'll tell you, but you can go on the app and it'll tell you Comic Con exclusive or Summer Con Convention exclusives. So, yeah. very cool. Yeah, and then uh, just off sites like yeah, and, and getting announced all the time, which we'll talk about. Yeah, in two weeks. we will talk about in right. two weeks since we're starting to get tight on time here. Yes. So yeah. what we will do, we're going to end our show with a really cool video from. Um, J uh, from Jake Jerley. Um, yeah, the Jacobus system. The Jacobus system. I always forget it's from the Jacobus system. We're going to end with that. But first, guys, let's talk about some exclusives that we have seen, that we have found, that yes. we are kind of excited Lego. about. Lego. Lego. There are always several Lego sets that are Comic Con exclusives that I get excited about, and I never actually end up getting on it in time to get them anyway. Um, but I still like end up just wishing that I had them. Um, of course, the Batman one looks awesome because yeah. it's the Gotham City scene and a little Lego Batman minifig. And let's be honest, Lego Batman is the best Batman. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> And, and then there's, and there's a, wait, there's the Lego there is, Batman yeah. right there in our exclusives. There's a Captain Marvel ship with the Flurkin down in the corner, and that's a Flurkin. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds so um, naughty, doesn't it? <laughs> and then there's also the there's a Spider-Man minifig, but it's the PS4 game oh, nice. edition of Spider-Man. Um, so it's got a certain look to it from that, which is pretty cool. And then there is going to be some kind of a Star Wars Lego thing, but from what I can find, they haven't announced it yet, and everybody's just kind of speculating about what it might be. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I got to jump in real quick and say the one thing, well, there's many things, but the one thing that I'm most excited about Toho, the company behind Godzilla, the, my favorite giant monster, mm -hmm. is this is their very first time ever coming to Comic Con. They are celebrating Godzilla's 65th anniversary, his 65th birthday. Wow. With um, a presence on the floor. Plus, they have a very cool Godzilla, I think it's a six inch collectible based on the 19. Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah. 1954 Godzilla. Um, God help the person who's in front of me that gets between me and that booth when I see that <laughs> booth. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah. that, I'm going to be super God. stoked for that one. Katie, what do you got? Okay, mine are Funkos. If I can get into the booth, they have um, <laughs> green chrome Boba Fett and Yoda pop Funko Pops that they're releasing for Comic-Con. And they also have a Derek Zoolander as the mermaid one, which I'm super <laughs> excited about. Merman, Katie. Merman, sorry, my bad. Uh, so they have some really cool Funko Pops coming out. Um, they're literally announcing them like every single day. I love the Yoda, the Yoda like shimmery yeah, green. Yeah, the green chrome one. It's yes. pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and they're doing just a whole bunch. Um, and I know they were going to see one from Jake that I also know is going to be really popular yeah, too. Jake. So I'll let him talk, tell you guys yeah. about it, but yeah. What's cool is like in celebration of Ghostbusters 35th anniversary, there's a Ghostbusters movie slot 
blind mm. action figure box set. Oh, that all four awesome. of the it, oh, wow. like action figures of all four characters completely slimed. That it's is, slimed it's me. going for about eighty bucks. It's going to be sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios, and uh, I don't know where it's at. Anyways, there's also the um, from Star Wars, the Star Wars concept, the Star Wars concept Sand Trooper minibus based on the Macquarie paintings that the original Star Wars designs were built on, the Ralph McQuarrie. Mm. Remember those paintings that the Star Wars universe was built on? I have a, I have like a print set of like 18 of them. Oh, are yeah. you serious? Yeah. I, that, talk about FOMO. It was, it was like a barn find, too. Oh, it's, wow. I'll show them to you sometime. But this is a six-inch scale bust. There's only 750 pieces, so they will go fast. It's yeah, selling sure. for $120, designed by Gentle Giant Studios. Also... The second uh, SDCC Marvel Legends set, they have um, that? Benicio Del Toro's The Collector and Jeff Goldblum's The Grandmaster, and it looks just oh. like them. It, but it's great it, to have those two in a set together. It I just know. Makes those sense. are like two of my yeah. most favorite characters ever from that. Oh, by the way, for my Funko Pop, mm -hmm. my Funko Pop choice, um, Carl and Ellie, yes. the young Carl and Ellie from Up. From oh. Pixar's oh, Up. Yeah. It just makes me makes me tear up just mm -hmm. seeing it. And real quick, before we go to the film, guys, what about that Doctor Who... Um, where's it at? The Doctor Who, 13th Doctor in the... Oh, with the materializing TARDIS. Yes, the mater materializing? <laughs> yeah, that's it's dope. It's, it, it's half kind of like shimmery, not even Dude, there. Dude, that's, that's awesome. Right. Okay, I did not see that. That's awesome. All right, cool. is there anything I really else? enjoyed this last season, BT Dubs. I you haven't seen it yet. What'd you, yeah. And Derek, I know you're a fan. I mean, I don't know about this last season. I, I like I only got a few episodes in, and then some weird thing with DirecTV deleted the episodes before I could watch them no. that I saved. And, yeah, so I'm waiting <laughs> for it to show up on Amazon Prime. Ah, yes. Yeah. And I do have to say these last two because one for Brad. Brad, there is a brand-new He-Man set coming to Comic-Con. It is 40 bucks. Prince Adam and He-Man he both. And I know that you'll be looking for that. And also, for Luke, who's not here, they're having a John Hammond and Egg from the Jurassic Park original yeah. film. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. That it's a celebrating 25 years. The man who started it all comes with a signature cane as well as a dino hatching from its egg. That is very, very cool. We have a special video right here that is going to end our show for us. Jake, the Jacob Assistant, picks the top 10 items from San Diego Comic Con this year. Hey everybody from the Con Guy. This is Jake from the Jacob Assistant. I made another video of top 10 San Diego Comic Con exclusives. So let's check them out. <laughs> Number that. 10, we have Funko Pop 2-Pack for Jaws. It's the Shark Biting Quint 2-Pack. Pretty cool set. It's actually very reminiscent of the set that Funko had done with the reaction figures back in uh, 2015. And as you can see, it's a little gory, so it's probably good that it's exclusive and not really available in most stores. So, cool set. It's at booth 5341. Number 9, we have Hallmark Ewok Speeder Bike Ornament. So, Hallmark has really cool Christmas ornaments. Uh, they actually have a whole fan base to themselves where people will collect these kind of a big uh, deal and uh, this one was just so fun to see i love that scene in return of the jedi where the ewok steals the speeder bike and just imagine having that ornament on your christmas tree is a lot of fun um i couldn't find the booth number for hallmark but uh just keep your eye out for the hallmark booth and this awesome set <laughs> Number eight from Mattel, we have the Macho Man Randy Savage Slim Jim commercial figure. This is so fun. It's crazy. Uh, anyone who grew up in the 90s remembers this commercial with Macho Ooh, Man yeah. saying, snap into a Slim Jim. Um, the box is really cool, too, because he actually looks like he comes in a Slim Jim box. So <laughs> yeah, really fun stuff. Uh, this is at the Mattel booth, which is number 2945. At number seven, we have NECA. Terminator 2 Ultimate John Connor figure. This is a great set. He comes with a lot of items, uh, his bike and a couple of other accessories. And you can actually swap out his head to make him look like either his appearance in Terminator 2 or the T2 Battle Across Time 3D movie that they used to have at Universal Studios. An attraction. Really fun set. You can That's find cool. this at the yeah. NECA booth, which is 3145. They know what the people want. At number six, we have Star Wars Vintage Collection I love this. Luke Skywalker yeah. three and three quarter inch Destiny figure set. Uh, this set will go for fifty bucks and features three different uh, versions of Luke Skywalker. Uh, really cool set. I love the packaging. Is like the Vintage Collection, like how they used to have the figures in the seventies, and uh, really cool to kind of see the progression of that character in three, you know, figure form. So uh, take a look for this. It's at the Hasbro booth, which is number three three two nine. 
Number five from Entertainment Earth, we have the Kiss Love Gun three and three quarter inch figure set. <laughs> this is great. I love the uh, Love Gun uh, costumes that Kiss had from their 1977 album. Really fun to see them in uh, that sort of scale as the vintage Star Wars figures because you, you think about, you know, 1977, two of the biggest things ever, you know, in the world, Kiss and Star Wars. So it's great to have those kind of pair up in similar style. So this is at the Entertainment Earth booth, which is number 2343. Gene Simmons is a big fan of Number books. four from Super 7. They're back. They're doing the Revenge of Bodega, Universal Monsters yes. Monster. Store. I went to this last year and it was a lot of fun. Lots of really cool items here. Uh, they have action figures. They have uh, posters, stickers, all kinds of stuff. Glassware, uh, you know, beach towels and stuff like that. And this is actually a pop-up shop That's that it. they have at their store. So it's not actually, you know, on the floor at, at Comic-Con, but you go out to their <laughs> store, which is just a couple blocks away. Uh, the address is 701 8th Avenue, and it's the Super 7 store. Awesome. Number three from Hasbro, we have Star Wars Black Series six inch Boba Fett vintage Ooh, inspired. That's gonna go fast. So oh, actually yeah. next oh, year will dope. be the fortieth anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. And to celebrate, uh, Hasbro did this vintage inspired Boba Fett to look like the uh, classic action figure. So the same kind of color scheme and package, wow. even though it's the six inch scale, which is kind of the more modern Star Wars thing. So uh, this set's gonna go for twenty four ninety nine. And you can find them at the Hasbro booth, which is number 3329. Get into the lottery. Number two for NECA, we have the yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Capture of Splinter 4-Pack. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Last year, NECA knocked it out of the park with their original um, film Turtle 4-Pack. And what they're doing now is continuing that set with these other classic characters, Shredder, Splinter, and two foot soldiers. And it recreates that classic scene from that movie. So this set's going to be a big hit, I'm sure. Um, it's, it goes for $125. And you can find it at the NECA booth, which is number 3145. Look at this. Look okay, at this. here we yeah, go. Number one, so Hasbro, Ectotron, Transformers, and Ghostbusters mashup. That's, That's crazy. So this insane. is so cool. It celebrates the 35th anniversary of both franchises. I didn't realize that. And uh, this, yeah. this awesome mashup where you have Optimus Prime as sort of like an Ecto-1 inspired Transformer. He's got the, you know, the different paint scheme. He even comes with a little Slimer and a couple other things. So... So cool. And one of my favorite things about this set is the packaging is actually a proton pack that you can wear on your <laughs> back. Amazing. So how cool is that? So this set is going to go for $149.99, and it will be at the Hasbro booth, which is number 3329. All right, so there you go. Like I said, lots of really cool stuff this year. Um, good luck finding any of these if you're out in San Diego this year at Comic-Con. And uh, thanks for watching the video, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you, Jake, from the Jacob System. That is wow. a fantastic wrap up. I mean, that he, yeah. he's so comprehensive with that. I loved his silver shamrock T-shirt too, and that was <laughs> yeah. pretty cool. I know. So we, as we wrap up the show, we just want to encourage you guys to like us, follow us, uh, 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 talk about us. By the way, Gene Simmons, he is a big comic book fan. Remember, they released a comic book in the big promotion from I think it was from Marvel. It was the comic book was printed with their own blood. <laughs> Great. Anyways, you can find me. All right. You can find me on Twitter at Jim Fry LA. You can also find me on theconguy.com. Derek, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at conguy, Derek, and on theconguy.com. I'm Katie. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Katie underscore Christine. And if you're in Huntington Beach, I will be walking in the Huntington Beach Fourth of July Parade. I will cause cause playing there. So if you are going, maybe I'll see you there. Yeah. I'm Ben Cleaver. You can find me on all social media at B E N K L I E W E R. Hard to spell, easy to say. Anyway, um, but I mostly just use Instagram and Twitter, but I'll be doing a few more stand-up uh, bits here and there coming up, so be sure to follow me. I'm trying to be more active on Twitter, too. All right, and let us know. We'll post it on the kind of guy. Sure thing. All right, this week, Stranger Things. Let us know what you think about Ooh. it. All right, oh, next yeah. week, it's all about the Release. panels. The panels are released starting on July 4th of Comic-Con, next four, July 4th to the 7th. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Happy 4th of July. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the host only. They do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.